What's going on, y'all? My name is Izzy Lemons. I'm a musician, a music producer, a composer, writer, and audio engineer. But most importantly, today I am a Studio One and machine user. Uh, I feel like there aren't many videos that really show you how to get a, a really good working workflow with Machine and Studio One, and I wanna show that today because I feel like I found a really good way to use that. So if you're interested, tune in. So first, we're gonna start with a blank song in Studio One, all right? So we can go over to our instruments over here in the browser tab, find native instruments. We're gonna open up the Machine VST. I'm gonna drag this over. There's a preset that I have on here that I think is set as default, but we're gonna work around this um, and I'm gonna show you to the best of my ability how to, how to do it. So, as you can see, um, on mine, there are many different groups that are open. We're just gonna focus on group one, group A1 right now. So, as you can see, I have my machine Mark III in front of me, so I'll be doing some of this on the machine. Um, it gets a little tedious, but we can we can get through this. All right. So the first step that I recommend is that you go to your mix window after you have um, machine open. Go to your mix window. There's a tab over here that says instruments. Um, you, it should already be open. If not, just click it, and you can expand this where it says machine and click every single one of these. This is gonna activate the 16 audio outs that we have with the machine VST. So this will give our audio a place to go and we can process each pad individually instead of using a bus. Okay. So we've got those. If you would like, you can color all of them a specific color. I'll pick red for now, even though the group is orange. Um, all right, so the next step, we're going to go, we're gonna make sure that we're selecting sound in this area, right? So right now we're activating the, the plugin, the plugin instance, and we're gonna move over to channel, which is this one right here, as you saw it switch. Make sure you're under the sound category and not group or master gotta be under sound this is how we manipulate each individual pad so um, we're gonna start at output we're gonna make sure that each pad um, its output matches its output number matches with the pad number so sound one is gonna go through external out one this is under audio on output for the sound make sure you're on these three um, otherwise you may not even be seeing these options so um, pad one will be external out one two external out two three four vice versa all the way up to 16 so I'm just gonna tap each of these and make sure that mine are in sync yep everything's looking all right um, I've done this in a different way before, but I found a new way to do it that allows you to make some different changes. Um, so our audio out is set. Um, of course, don't switch the cue on and don't mute the audio. That would stop it from coming through. So now we're gonna go over to MIDI. I'm gonna click it right here. Every single one of these pads should say host as the destination and then again we're going to make sure that each one corresponds to the pad number this is where we start to differ um in what i've had before so i'm going to go here make sure it says host oh and the transpose should be zero for all of them as you can see i'm kind of moving it here and moving it from the machine so host one Pad two should be host two with zero transpose. Pad three, vice versa. Okay. So my MIDI outputs are set. Everything is on host as the destination and each MIDI channel corresponds to the pad number that's there. All right, so we have a place for the MIDI to go out. So now 
I'm going to create 15 new tracks, new instrument tracks, 15 right here. Um, I'm not gonna title them anything, but the inputs obviously will be existing instrument. Um, the inputs, we're gonna go to machine two and start with channel two because channel one is already set here on the first instance of machine. So we're gonna start from channel two here on input and have it ascend, which will take it all the way up to 16. And then we're gonna start, we're gonna do the same thing here. Channel two and ascend it. So now we have a folder because I hit pack folder as well. You can do that um, if you like just for convenience and just organization of everything. But now we have the channels. I'll take this first instance and drop it in this folder as well. Um, one thing that you're going to see, if I select all of these and expand, all of these have an input and an output, except for the first one. So what we're going to do, instead of allowing it to say all inputs, we're going to change it to machine two and then it should automatically go to channel one. So now all of these have outs, great, but they need to go in somehow. So now we're gonna go back to machine, open up machine. We're gonna select input. We're gonna, excuse me. So now we're gonna go over to input and we're gonna click MIDI under input. We're not gonna touch um, the source, the, the audio input. But for MIDI, each each pad should be host and then again. Make sure through is off. Make sure through is off. It's gonna create a very unpleasant sound. So we'll assign these just like we did with the with the output okay so now that we've got our input our MIDI inputs set and corresponding to each pad under host we're gonna test it so because I have them packed in this folder I can just hit the record enable but because the audio is gonna be coming out of machine anyway you can turn the monitor off for all of these. So we're just gonna do a test recording. There are no sounds on my pads. Um, and we're gonna see if each channel gets its, its pad being hit. So we'll see if it picks it up. So we have some success. All right, so how does, what does doing it this way really change so if we would like um i know that using machine we like to use this keyboard function and the chord function that we have um available to us with the pads before with the way that i used to use machine in studio one i wouldn't be able to do that because it was just all coming through midi channel one so now if i so choose i can say go to pad three and let's go over here and say I want to use an 808 of some sort. Um, I just saw one of my favorite ones, but we'll do this one. It's a 21 Savage. That's really loud. Okay. All right. Let's put that on pad three, right? So if I want to record and pitch my 808 without using anything else, Let's change the polyphony of that to one. So now, if I were to hit keyboard on my machine mark three and hit record, oops, that's an awkward place to start. Here we go. Let's try to click off. Oops. So now I can pitch 808s. I 
pitch my 808s without throwing it in anywhere else. So imagine what you can do with that. You can pitch hi-hats if you like. You can pitch snares. You can even do one-shot samples of uh, of instruments with maybe a synthesizer and even chopping samples up on one pad and having it function in Studio One like that. But this allows you to be a little bit more flexible with machined in Studio One. Um, and when you're ready to just get rid of seeing everything, you can pack the folder back up and here you go. We can title this machine just, just for the sake of it. Um, I hope this helped. Um, I know that this has helped my workflow speed up like a significant amount and allows me to be a, a little bit more creative. So um, if you have any more questions or anything, please feel free to hit me up. If you have another way of doing this and something that I may have missed, feel free to let me know. All right. Thanks for watching.